to Cloth and Stuff Designs. I'm admin Sassy Cat, and this is my first video and I thought that I should, um, because I promised that uh, when I hit 100 followers that I would do a video for you guys and this is it. So thank you, by the way, a big thank you to everyone who's been following all my stuff on Instagram and on Facebook and all of that. I love every single one of you and um, just as well, I'm also always open for commissions, be it art or first suiting. But today I thought for you guys I should do a small video on just a few tips over the years that I've learned as a first suitor. Um, I've been first suiting for, um, well, I've been, for, I've been making first suits, sorry, for about three years now. Um, my first one didn't go so well, um, and now I actually have had two more attempts at it. Um, I've made a few things over my time, um, but also I've learned a lot of weird weird tips along the way, and so I just thought um, that maybe I should share them with you guys. These are the things that I have learned, but I haven't been f able to find these sorts of tips anywhere else. So I thought, especially for really newbie fursuit makers, some of these things are really interesting and really helpful along the road because if you're like me, I am the absolute queen of mistakes. And if there is a mistake to be made, then I will make it. So, <laughs> so I'll be sharing a few um, personal experiences and stories. And I have a small list here. So if I'm looking down, it's because I'm looking at my phone to um, keep myself on track because I tend to tangent quite a lot. Um, but first I thought I'd show you guys the suits that I have made. Um, this is skittish. She's my Sona, she's a skunk, she's 15 years old and she loves flowers and candy and just she's a general cutie. But as you can see, um, she was really not a... well she took me about six months to fully make just the head. Um, actually no, just the, I think the head just took me about maybe three, maybe a month or two. But um, there was a few things that I didn't like about this suit. Um, first off being the face shape in general, because originally I wanted her to be really toony, but then I changed my style and um, and I didn't really like the way that she was. But another thing was that she was quite um, small on the inside, very hard to get on and off. And you know, she kind of got ratty really fast because I used cheap, cheap furs. Um, but yeah, to be honest, for my first suit, I wasn't too, um, I wasn't too, um, ashamed of her in the sense of, you know, oh, it was my first time. Um, but yeah, she's, so she's my baby, and she's a cutie, and yeah. <laughs> but that was my very first head, and since then, um, I have improved a lot of my style, actually. Um, and also not just my style but the way that I make them and that was really critical for me in advancing um, was learning from my mistakes so that is a big thing is that just because you're new and you're screwing up a lot doesn't matter because for every mistake you make then you know how to not do that thing so like for an example um, big thing that I struggled with was um, movable jaws they are Satan. I'm sorry, they really are. I struggle so hardly with movable jaws. Um, the first time actually that I did skittish, um, this jaw is supposed to be movable. Um, as you can see, it it's not really. Like it does, but it's very, very, very small basic movements. Um, but I got so frustrated with this movable jaw that I tore it off actually three times. I even threw the entire head down the hallway um, because I'm a 12 year old that likes to throw tantrums. <laughs> but, um, so yes, I got so frustrated with making her movable jaw because I, um, I did a few wrong things and one of the things was I sewed, um, I put glue on the elastic on the balaclava all along so the elastic seized up and it didn't actually move whatsoever. But I've actually revamped her, and yeah, she's not finished yet still, but as you can see, she has improved 
a lot. Like not just in terms of like, you know, aesthetically um, she's changed in style, but also I've given her Follow Me Eyes, which I just installed a few days ago. And I'm really proud of them because they're the first time I've ever done that. And so they work really well. Uh, but also I can actually see out of these ones, which is always good because seeing is crucial out of eyes. <laughs> but this one's much better. The jaw works so much better. Um, I managed to get the elastic perfect and and um, I didn't have to scream over this one, but yes. Um, so that's so that's new skittish, skittish number 2.0. Um, I've also been working on this little thing. This is going to be Matcha, and he's my little femboy bun. And I haven't finished him, so please don't judge him too harshly because I haven't even finished the lower jaw. But yes, he's he's going to be my little little bun bun. And I'm super excited till he's finished. But a few of the other things I have done are Skittish's hand paws. <laughs> Skittish is a, known as a squeaky squeaker fursuit, so she doesn't speak even though she has a movable jaw. I know, I'm stupid. But um, she squeaks everywhere that she goes. And these were um, these were relatively easy to make when I got a good pattern down because her original paws actually were terrible. Again, I used cheap cheap fur, and I didn't have my um, I didn't have the right technique down yet. Um, and I instead of um, putting the foam all over the hand, I just put it on the fingers. <sighs> that was the biggest mistake I've ever made because um, I'd put foam. I so I'd done foam on my fingers like little balls, and I dug the hole out so that my fingers would go inside of them. But then I also decided. Hey, because I don't like the feeling of foam on bare skin, especially when it's sweaty and gross, I'm gonna stick a glove in it. And so, what I did was I put the, the glue on the glove and then stuck the fingers, yeah, and it was just nothing but burns, agony, and, you know, tears. But, um, I've changed that now, and now I do a different method that doesn't involve agony, tears, and screaming. But also, other than the paws, I've made skittish in the tail. And like I said, she's a skunky, so with a nice big skunky tail, and it is super soft and cuddly. And um, this one's a, a downward tail, I suppose. I wanted to make a standing tail, like one that grows upright, like real skunks, but um, yeah, I sucked majorly at that as well. Um, the first time I tried to do it, I did it with wire and a few other things, but the wire actually snapped the day before a con that I was going to wear her to and it severely cut my back and I couldn't use her and in the end I had to go as a really weird partial because I didn't even actually have any clothes that had long sleeves or jeans with me so it looked really bad, sorry. Um, if I talk too fast I tend to burp. <laughs> yeah, but um, I didn't have any jeans or long sleeve t-shirts with me and so I had to wear a dress, which is great for Skittish's, um, for, um, her character because she's a really sweet little lolly girl, but not so great when you can see best skin at a con and it just looks, it just looks all kinds of wrong. But, so this is Skitty's tail, um, and you can see it goes around the belt, and I'll explain more about those later. But last thing that I wanted to show you before I get into the tips is... Her, her, her paws. These are paws number two as well. Um, as you can see, they've got really squishy little tootsies and they're super cute and fluffy. And they're actually called stompy paws. Um, they're really, really soft and really, really easy to walk around in. Um, they look kind of awkward, but pretty much after about walking around in them in about, for about an hour, you kind of get the gist of where to put your feet and it becomes super easy to walk in them. Um, I also made shoes for them because because there was such, well, because she's got white feet, um, dirt tends to get so easily attached and really obvious on the bottom of her feet. Plus, she's got these cute little squishy tootsies that I didn't want to get wrecked, so I made shoes for her when she's going around outside. Um, and these were really easy to make. Um, they were, I just, I kind of screwed them up the first time, so, but I added more foam into them. They were just made out of like, like, uh, like 
yoga mats or whatever, like not yoga mat, but like, you know, like in kindergarten or whatever when you're a little kid and you've got those weird mats on the floors with like a jigsaw puzzle that fits together. Well, yeah, it's just like that. And I just destroyed them. <laughs> and then I added um, just some Velcro and stuff. And I had to do a little bit of tweaking to make sure that they fit, especially after the first time because they tended to um, slide off the back a little bit. So I fixed it up, but you know, um, but yeah, so that's one of my pores as well. My first pores that I made were really bad. They were super bad. Like, they were really hard to walk around in because they were long and just, ugh. And they were, I made them with an old pair of Ugg boots. Yeah, I know. Stupidest idea I've ever done because... Because fursuiting is hot. Regardless. Meanwhile, when you've got insulation in your feet, um, you sweat immus immensely, so immensely, mm, yes, because I can English, um, but you sweat, sweat a little, <laughs> forgive me, but you sweat immensely, and so when I use an Ugg boot, it just got a hundred times worse, so that wasn't my best idea ever. Alrighty, well, getting to the point now of onto the tips, so you can clearly see that I've done a few different, um, so a few different mediums, and... I've been at, like I said, I've been at this for about three years now, and when I'm not drawing, I'm fursuit making, and, oh, I've also done a pair of fawn legs, uh, or digigrade, um, ram's legs, and hoofs to go with it. I don't have them here with me to show you, but I'll just, um, put up a few photos of them right now in this commentary. As you can see, they are um, they're really soft and really squishy, but they're in, um, they're a little bit hard to walk in in the sense of I, I packed them too hard with foam, but that's because I'm a bit of a perfectionist. But anyway, I wore them to a medieval festival, and a lot of people really really liked them. And so yeah, so these are some of the things that I've already done. And as you can see, uh, so I've clearly done a lot to be able to give you a few solid tips on what to do and what especially not to do. Because I'm great at finding mistakes. Like I said, if there is a mistake to be made, then I will find it. And so uh, my first tip I've got here is, oh yes, when I was making Skittish's eyes, the new Skittish, um, as you can see, they're made out of the Christmas, um, uh, like DIY Christmas ornaments or, well I was going to use vinyl but then I screwed it up so I had to rip it off and start again and I tried to do these eyes about five different times but as I was gluing these eyes in what happened was a lot of glue ended up on the plastic and that is a really freak, it really freaks you out because it's like oh no this is going to be the finished product, I can't have glue just sitting on there and especially if I'm going to see out of it then it's going to be horrible. But basically what I found is that to remove glue from plastics, like especially hard plastics, and I, sh I haven't tried this on vinyl yet, so I'm not too sure, but basically um, if you've got hot glue on hard plastic, just get a little bit of rubbing alcohol or um, I had methylated spirits, which I'm from Australia, so um, that's what we call rubbing alcohol here. Um, and I just dipped it in a cot I dipped uh, cotton bud into it and I just rubbed it really carefully um, on the plastic making sure that not to like you know scratch it which it just came off super easy and you know the big panic over easy solution um, but yeah so if you got glue on that just use some um, methylated spirits or rubbing alcohol and just wipe it off and it is super easy so don't be bothered too much if when gluing in your eyes you absolutely make a brothel of it because that's exactly what I did. I had glue everywhere and I was just, I really wanted to like, you know, slap myself in the face that day because I was like, oh, that's fun. We tried to do this super perfectly and what did we do? We pretty much screwed it up every, t screwed up everything. So, but that's fine. It was an easy fix. Um, but always, but this is actually a super good tip because like I said, I didn't know about this and I was like Googling it for like a hundred hours going, help me. But yeah, so there's one tip that I can give to you. Um, Oh, yes, always have burn cream near. If you're a retard like I am, then I always, always burn myself. Like, um, uh, my train of thought always dies. Um, uh, if you're like me, you burn yourself 
every time you pick up a glue gun. Doesn't matter whether you're doing a small patch job or if you're actually working on something solid like gluing on a friggin' cheek. Um, and because I'm always safe and uses the hottest glue gun available, um, because I find that it works the best in terms of what I want to do. Uh, when you burn yourself, it's always incredibly bad. Um, there was a, when I was first making Skittish's head, I actually burnt every single one of my fingers, um, including my thumb, especially this thumb. I burnt it so badly that for about a week straight, I had to keep it in ice water, and I slept with my hand in the ice water for about a week. Uh, and yeah, my whole skin basically peeled off and I didn't have um, a fingerprint on this thumb for a long time because I was a, I was, I was a dickhead and uh, because when I glue stuff down I like to touch it and yeah to make sure that it gets <laughs> my motto is that as long as my first suit looks fine it doesn't matter how bad I get burnt so yeah so that happened but always have burn cream near um, it's, it's better than ice water because instead of, cause I, I found that the more you put the water and the ice on your fingers and stuff and wherever it is that you get burnt, um, the longer you have that problem of, you know, that burning sensation. Um, I've also taken, um, oh, you can't really see it here, but I have a big scar here from when I would reached over and put my elbow into a piece of foam that had hot glue all over it and of course my reaction time is so slow I was like oh this kind of hurts and so yeah when I came off my skin came off, off with me so yeah I've had some pretty mint ass times trying to do these things so yeah always have burn cream near um oh that same week that I burnt every single one of my fingers I discovered do not have glue guns on for too long like if if it gets to the point where it's starting to burn your fingers a lot, then you take it out of the wall or switch it off. Because what happened with me is I had my glue gun on for the same one, um, well, a different model, uh, the same model, different glue gun, sorry. Um, I'd had it on for about an hour or so, like a long, well, probably longer than that. And basically it exploded and it set fire and that was not fun, especially, um, because it scared the absolute bejesus out of me and my friends. Um, but yeah, so, and it was incredibly dangerous. So don't do that. Um, always make sure that they have a cool down period. And you can actually, especially with the high temp ones, you can actually still use the glue gun while it's cooling down. Um, because then it just gets really, really hard. And then basically towards the end of the cooling off period, it, the, the glue just doesn't come out at all. So you just switch it back on. But that constant flow of cooling and heating and cooling and heating you'd think wouldn't be too good for it but apparently it does because I've had this now this gun for a long time now and it's not set fire to me yet so always watch your glue guns to make sure they're not getting too hot don't leave them on for too long um you do not want to electrocute yourself or set fire to your glue gun like I did hey guys sorry I had to cut the first video halfway because it was starting to get kind of long but I will be uploading the second half very shortly and um, so I hope that some of these tips were helpful um, there's more on the way uh, if you've got any questions please feel free to leave any um, in the comments or um, please follow my Instagram and my Facebook at fluff and stuff designs and if you are interested in any commissions or have like I said if any questions feel free to PM me um, I am super, I'm pretty much always, always available to talk, um, and then if not, it is because I am sleeping. <laughs> That's literally my life, as sleeping and fursuiting and watching movies, so yeah. So thank you very much my surfets, I hope you have a lovely fursuit Friday, and cheers!